I just wanted to tell everybody about uh, this thing I've been working on that, um, you know, I mentioned in the video that we got a 3D printer. And I think this whole 3D printer thing is nothing short of revolutionary, whether you're a farmer or a homemaker or a engineer or a, um, I don't know, an Uber driver. <laughs> I think pretty much like across the board, anybody could really use a 3D printer to do some really amazing things. And so um, what I've started to do is any of the 3D prints that I design, I will be sharing those 3D prints on a website. I've started my own blog, basically. And as of right now, I only really care about the blog so that I can share my 3D prints with people. So on the blog, um, each entry is basically going to be a 3D print that I've created. And you can download the uh, STL files. STL files are used in designing 3D objects on various software platforms. So you can download the STL file for free. Uh, and you can use a 3D printer. Maybe you've got one um, at a local library or a makerspace nearby, or maybe your friend has one. And so if you have access to a 3D printer, um, you can just download that STL file and use it for free and print out as many copies as you want and modify it however you want, however you see fit. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, I am willing to print items out for people, um, but I will charge for this just because um, it, it, it's time, it's money for materials, it's money for maintenance, it's money for postage and all that stuff. So I, I do have to charge if you want to purchase an item from me. Um, but again, just download the STL file for free. Um, this, is not, this is not a way to make money. Uh, I'm charging $10 per item. That means at most I could do 30 items per month, which would be literally $300, not taking into consideration the cost of materials and all that. And so this is not a way to make money. It's just realistically, if, if someone wants to me to print an item out, I will need, you know, money for time and materials and maintenance and all that. So, um, but yeah, if you want to buy a certain item, just let me know. There's a way to purchase it on the blog. There's a, there's a PayPal button that you can use to purchase items. And so, um, yeah, I'm happy to print items out for you guys and, um, keep an eye on the blog. Uh, I, as of right now, it's just a way for me to share the files for 3d printing um, but in the future, I do picture myself actually posting a little bit more on the blog just for fun. And so keep an eye on it um, if you're interested, and it will post, um, you know, hopefully more regularly in the future. But at least for now, I'll, I'll post my 3D um, printer files on there for you guys to use. Everyone, welcome back. I'm just preparing for springtime here. Um, we know uh, springtime's a crunch time, and uh, man, it's just really intense. You gotta start slamming stuff into the ground, and it's just, you know, really, really busy period. And so um, I've come up with a little creation that I think is gonna help ease my, uh, ease my, um, hi. I've come up with a little creation that I think is gonna sort of ease the stress of, of uh, spring planting time, the spring, spring planting rush. Um, because one of the big things that slows me down is the um, planting seeds in, in seed trays. It's really tedious. You've got to dibble the little holes and then you've got to put seeds in each hole. And it, uh, you know, just, if there's any way that we could speed that up, that's such a big part of the spring rush. And so I've made this little creation. Um, I got a 3D printer. Actually, no, I should say Santa brought us a 3D printer um, uh, for Christmas this year. And uh, so, what I've done is I've created this little dibbler. So it's got, you know, a little pointy end to form the holes. And then um, I made the holes hollow so that we can drop seeds in there. So right now these pointy pieces are uh, closed off uh, so seeds wouldn't be able to pass through. And so what I plan on doing is just kind of snipping the very bottom off with scissors. This plastic is really strong and sturdy so that it should hold up just fine. Uh, that'll open up a little hole that will allow seeds to pass through these little seed wells into the hole that's dibbled by the by the piece. So it's winter currently and winter I'm going to be growing some turnips and rutabagas, things like that, you know, winter crops. And so my plan 
is take the turnip seeds and figure out how large the little hole needs to be at the bottom of the unit for these turnip seeds to pass through easily. And then we'll start diddling. So these are um, Haida Benny Red from Baker Creek. I'm just gonna put one seed in each seed well and we'll see where we need to snip the bottom off of this little uh, dibbler to allow the seed to pass through. All right, so there we've got one seed in each well. And so I'm thinking, yeah, it's pretty low down there, so I don't need to snip it off too high. So I'm thinking maybe about two millimeters from the bottom is gonna be sufficient. So let's try this out. So that's about two millimeters right there. Let's try it out. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Looks like turnip seeds would pass right through there, no problem. So I'll snip off the others at about that same height. And there we go. Perfect, so let's try this out. <clears throat> All right, so this was designed for a 50 cell seed tray. This is the 10 by 20 um, 50 cell seed tray. The dibblers are spaced to get exactly in the middle of each cell. So one thing I'm noticing already is that these are far too shallow. So that's one thing I'm, I'm gonna need to change. And level this out a little bit. Yeah, so these definitely need to be deeper. All right, so here we go. Try dibbling some holes, okay. And so, yeah, that's a good depth for turnip. They don't need to be real deep. One, two, two, so three. Put that in there, lift it out, and fail. So what's happened, as you can see, is when you dibble the holes, they fill with soil. Let me try snipping the holes a little bit larger. Yeah, the seeds are still stuck in there. Taking a little bit more off here. Make these a little bit larger. All right, <clears throat> so now you can see the holes are a good amount larger. So we've got our holes dibbled. You are very sweet. You are very sweet. Yeah, you are a sweetheart. All right, go up, please. Okay, go up, Sandy. Sandy. Sandy, go up. Okay, go up. Good girl. One, two, that was actually two seeds. Three, lift it out. Okay, seeds passed through, no problem. Let's try that again. So there's our little dibbles. And again, I noticed some soil entering into the, into the holes. I think maybe just tap it out. Okay, let's try that. One, two, oops, two, three. Okay, seeds passed right through. <clears throat> now this right now, this right now is a three unit piece, but um, over time I will be designing these to have more units um, because my printer is too small to print five units across. So um, I need to think of a way to do that. I could switch the orientation so that instead of printing horizontally like this, it prints at a 45 degree angle. I think that'll give me just enough room. Another option is I could print it vertically. And if I print it vertically, then it will um, give me plenty of room to do a five row piece as well. And then I'm thinking that I could design it to where maybe these things could link together. So in addition to having a five row unit, like you see here, you could maybe clip them together to form two five row or two or three five row or four five row units. And that way, instead of dibbling one row at a time, you could dibble, you know, three, six, 10 rows at a time um, if you wanted to. So let's keep going here. <clears throat> All right. So, same deal as before, some soil did come up, so I'm gonna tap that out, I guess. So the dibbling and the seeding need to happen in two separate steps, it appears. All right. There's one, two, three. Okay, seed passed right through. Oh, that one got stuck. And then 
it bounced up. <clears throat> well, it's certainly not perfect, but I'm excited. It is going faster than it usually does, so that's neat. Definitely more work to go on this. Well, that wasn't the biggest improvement, but um, it was an improvement. And then I, I have some ideas on how I can make this better as well. So um, we shall uh, keep experimenting with this a little bit and see if we can make something of it. And uh, hopefully you guys are, maybe you guys are interested and want to follow along for the ride. So we'll see where this goes. Um, thanks for watching.